Okay, so let us make a start without further ado. And um, I want to uh, just give you a little bit of an introduction. We're in Nottingham. Nottingham is in the middle of England, uh, and it's a city with a population of about 350,000. Uh, it is known for several things. It is known for the legend of Robin Hood, which we're going to be exploring on our second tour later today. It is uh, known as a center of textile production. Uh, it's known as a student city, uh, a very good city for nightlife and entertainments. It's also a very sporting city. Uh, sport plays quite a big part in the, in the life and culture of uh, Nottingham. <laughs> Will I be wearing my Robin Hood hat, Joy? Um, if I can find it in the boot of the car, I might. Uh, it might put in an appearance. Not my tights, though, Heather. Nobody needs to see that, even virtually. <laughs> So uh, this tour is all about Nottingham's sports stadiums and we're going to be walking along and seeing some of them and talking a little bit about the sports teams, the history and uh, the links behind that. And on the way we'll be discovering a little bit more about Nottingham's industry and transport and, uh, and so on. So where are we? Well, we are beginning at this place. Like all arenas, it seems, in the world these days, has a sponsor, Motorpoint Arena, but uh, this building is essentially known as the National Ice Centre. Um, so uh, it is an arena that was constructed in and opened in 2000, uh, and it continues a long tradition of ice sport here on this site. Uh, the original Nottingham Ice Stadium, and uh, I'm going to take my hat off in memory of that beautiful building that was as much home as pretty much anywhere apart from the house of houses I've lived in for me as a child. A beautiful Art Deco 1930s building, uh, which was the home of my team. My team is the Nottingham Panthers hockey team. Um, and uh, they were founded in 1946 and played in that old stadium and moved into the new arena here uh, in the year 2000. It's where they've been ever, ever, ever since. And uh, the arena itself has a capacity for hockey of about 7,000 and uh, for concerts and other big events of about 10,000. Uh, also in the complex is a second Olympic size skating rink, which is used for training, for the junior teams and for public skating as well. So you have two Olympic size rinks within the building uh, and uh, a lot of the the national teams of figure skating, speed skating, and so on, have their training here and, and, and that kind of thing. A lot of concerts and events take place here. Um, while the hockey team, that's my big sport to follow, you know, that's been a massive part of my life and um, following the team for so many years, since I was seven years old, um, and still have a season ticket today, um, although I'm not attending this afternoon's game, which is just faced off, I think. <laughs> so the square's now quite quiet. Most people have gone inside already. A few latecomers straggling in. We could be, the way we've been playing lately, we could be a couple of goals down, but if they get in five minutes late. <laughs> so the place that we are standing is a square outside the arena, which is known as Bolero Square. And it's named Bolero Square in honour of the most famous ice sport names from Nottingham. And that was Jane Torville and Christopher Dean, wonderful ice dancers who famously at the 1984 Winter Olympics in Sarajevo scored a perfect score. And uh, that was with their, with their routine to the music Bolero. Uh, and so that is why the square here uh, is named in honour of Torville and Dean um, Bolero Square in their honour. So um, let's start to make our way away from the arena, shall we? Hear a big cheer. Uh, no need to um, no need to say you feel guilty. I, I wouldn't have been at the game anyway. Uh, I've actually not attended this season. Um, I wasn't really uh, very confident of the uh, COVID precautions that were in place around the arena. So uh, I haven't actually been this season. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I 
The other thing the arena is used for in hockey is the national playoff championship. So hockey is always about the playoffs, but uh, here in the UK, we don't have playoff series, you know, a best of five, best of seven. We don't have that. Our playoffs is a short series. And then the best four teams, they come to the playoff weekend. Takes place here in Nottingham, usually on this weekend of the year. It's been put back this year for reasons that I'm sure you can, uh, I don't need to uh, keep repeating uh, why many events have been put back by a month or so. Uh, and fans of every team in the UK come. It's a massive party for the whole weekend. Two semi-final games on the Saturday and then on the Sunday, the final, the grand final between the two winners. It is an amazing um, weekend of sport and of enjoyment and of camaraderie. One of the great things about hockey is it doesn't have any trouble in terms of segregation of fans, nothing like that at all, as other sports, particularly football in the UK, have had issues with in the past. So we are at the end of a, a little street called Hollow Stone. And you can see some of the stone here, the sandstone is hollowed out in places. And that's something that is very, very typical of Nottingham. Nottingham is built on sandstone, two sandstone outcrops. And since earliest times, people have made caves within the sandstone. People lived in caves in Nottingham here in the sandstone until the 19th century. We've got a couple of those old entrances bricked up here. This is where the oldest part of the city was. It's an area that was important in the textile industry. It's known as the lace market area because decorative lace was the most famous textile product here. First ever reference we have to Nottingham was in the document of the 9th century. Uh, and it was called in one of the Celtic languages that was being used. It was a Welsh scribe who wrote it. Nottingham was referred to as Tigeroaboch, which meant the place of caves. Robin, yes, um, there is a, an attraction that is open called the Caves of Nottingham, where they've made some of the, the caves accessible and you can go in and see some of the um, some of the uses that the caves were put to for people living and people using them for their businesses as for storage. Chile, the caves, well, people were living in caves for probably thousands of years. Um, and... Um, they were used right up until the uh, 19th century. But a lot of the sellers of the buildings here in the city these days, they still have, they are still cut directly into the rock and they are what are essentially caves. A lot of the sellers of the pubs, for example, where they store the drinks. Jen, you're right. Car parking in here is quite high to encourage people to use the transport network. Yes, uh, parking in the centre of Nottingham is very, very expensive. Um, and uh, people, say, for example, if you're going to a hockey game, you're encouraged to use the park and ride. Uh, so the uh, you get a cheap ticket for the tram. You can park at the huge car parking area on the edge of the city. You get the tram very close to the arena. Uh, and uh, if you've got your hockey ticket, you show that along with your tram ticket and that shows that you've, you've got the special deal. Um, they do uh, a season pass for car parking, actually, as well for the for the arena for a reasonable rate. But the, you're right, the public car parks are horrifically expensive in this part of town. Suffice to say that if I were to go to a hockey game, if I were to go and buy my ticket uh, just for the game, uh, the parking would cost me more than the ticket for the match at the local uh, public car parks. So we're going to make our way onto a, a road called London Road. And uh, so, I mean, it doesn't go all the way to London, but essentially it's the main road that traditionally went south out of Nottingham. So if you were heading to London or towards London, this is the way you would have gone. And that's where we're going to be for most of our um, tour today, because as we head off out of the city to the south, that's, uh, that's where we can find the other sports stadiums. And it's also where we find the River Trent. Uh, Nottingham established where it was, um, partly because of its proximity 
to the River Trent and with these great links. But uh, the actual river is a little way outside the, the centre of the city. Now, all of these modern buildings around us here, this was old industrial land and it all belonged to uh, one of Nottingham's most famous companies, Boots the Chemist, which employed and still does employ thousands of people in the city. But uh, these days, this old industrial site is no longer um, owned by Boots. Uh, what we do have on this site is the Nottingham headquarters of the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, uh, local radio and TV studios here. And the local radio from the BBC, uh, if you're not from the UK, um, this is a really big part of local culture here, and particularly among older generations of getting their local news and information and this real community feel of the radio stations. Uh, and as we're talking about sport today on our tour as well, local BBC um, channels are fantastic for sports commentaries because they really give great coverage of the local teams. And of course, if you're listening to your local team on the radio, what the best thing you want is a commentator who is just as biased as you are. You don't want any of this neutral commentary like that you get on the national networks. You want the commentator complaining about the referee just the same as you are as a fan. And that's what the local channels kind of do. Now, I talked about Boots and their huge industrial site here. Uh, the building across the way, the complex there with the chimney. Um, this is uh, a power plant. It was originally built in 1915. Uh, as a power plant for Boots to provide the power for all of their factories and laboratories and everything they had on this site. Uh, these days it's still a power plant. It's using uh, energy from waste materials uh, and it provides heating and power for properties, businesses and homes in the local area. So uh, fantastic that this is still being used and in a more environmentally friendly way. Now another one of the modern buildings we have here, something uh, really special again, British institutions really, we have the BBC over here, a uh, very important three-letter British institution and there's another one, the NHS, the National Health Service, uh, and this is called the Urgent Care Centre, uh, this is a walk-in centre for minor injuries. You know, you don't get taken there in an ambulance if you're in an accident. But if you have a minor injury, you can get yourself there, get some treatment, get some x-rays. Uh, and of course, the National Health Service here in, the, in England, free at the point of use. So you go in there and you get your medical treatment and it costs you nothing at all. Except for what you're paying through your taxes. I'll probably have to do a tour or a talk of some kind I think about the health care in the UK at some stage, as you have in Canada as well, Marlene. Yes, and uh, I think, you know, when I when I think about, you know, you think about your country and you think, what are the great things about being there? What are the not such good things? Uh, and I have to say, um, you know, our free at the point of use health system with all its issues uh, is something that I, I think is a, a really important thing that we have here. Um, Jan, yes, it could be under threat, um, but I don't think that uh, it's really under under serious threat because um, I don't think any politician in the UK could ever hope to get un elected in a, on a platform of getting rid of the National Health Service. Uh, <laughs> they may try to bring in some private providers and and so on as part of the system but uh, yeah I think uh, would be as they say political suicide so we've seen a lot of modern buildings so far I suppose um, the arena and the BBC and some of the new buildings but let's take a look at a beautiful Victorian building shall we and we're going to uh, Debbie, are you allowed to go anywhere you want or as soon as you want? Uh, you mean with the health service? Um, well, there are 
rules. I mean, you have to, the waiting lists can be quite long for major treatments, but uh, you know, if you have an accident or you have a serious illness, you are in there, you get the treatment that you need. You know, that's uh, so beautiful Victorian building here. And this was built in 1858. And uh, it was built by a local architect named Chambers. And it is, or was, a railway station and hotel. Um, so one of the things uh, that you find, the Victorians, you know, the railways were the wonder of the age. And they built very grand railway architecture. And this was a railway station built by a company called the Great Northern Railway Company. Uh, originally, they shared the facilities at um, what is these days still in operation as the main railway station in Nottingham. Um, but they kept having disputes between the different railway companies. And so they built their own a little bit later. What a beautiful building it is. Um, over time, it became less popular because the... Um, Victoria Station, as it was called, right in the centre of the uh, city was much more popular because it was much more convenient. And so this one declined, but passenger trains were running here until 1967. Um, and it was also an important transportation link for livestock because Nottingham's cattle market was very close to here and for industrial uses. And during the years of the Second World War, this was the main place that was used for the troop trains. Joy, I have seen your question and we will see the railway tracks soon because we're going to work, walk over the bridge there. Christoph has joined, another colleague joining. Hi, Christoph, great to meet you. I'm his daughter, not the colleague I'm, I know very well. Do you know? I don't even know where Christoph does his. Pleased to meet you, Christoph. I, I don't. Uh, art tours. Well, I will have to check those out because art is one of my subjects that I'm not so uh, knowledgeable and strong on. So, can you get across here? Yeah. Okay. Let's go across the road. You guys will be. Ah, Vancouver Island. Ah, I've seen some of your. Uh, I've seen some postcards and reports from your tours. I uh, didn't match up the name. So it's lovely to have you here. And a Canadian, but you've missed the hockey stadium. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we got a, a big modern employer, uh, the building with the flags there. This is Capital One. Uh, so a US uh, credit and finance company. Uh, this is their European headquarters. Uh, moved to Nottingham in 1996. Uh, the building they took on there was a 1930s building that used to be a print works belonging to Boots the Chemist. And they extended and expanded and built new buildings alongside it. Capital One employ 1,400 people here in Nottingham. Uh, and they have a, a very good reputation for being a good employer within the city. They're, they're very much known as uh, one of the leading uh, employers in Nottingham these days. And I said... We'd see the railway lines. In fact, we see trains. So the railway lines go under here. Uh, they go back across there where we saw the railway station there, which is now a gym. Within that, there's a gym and leisure club within there. Ken, are oh, you sure? Yeah, you would have come past from there from Newark. Yes, out to the northeast. And so we get the railway lines here. And... Uh, you can see the people on the platform there. That is the main railway station. Far a little way in the distance, you might be able to see the sort of the tower and the dome of the Victorian railway station. That's the, the main railway station in Nottingham now. So now we have to get back across the road. That's the only problem. So this part of the city you know we're south of the city center towards the river so this has always been a part of town that has been 
where a lot of the transportation infrastructure has been, you know, water-based from the river and the canals and then railways and roads as well. But that's why there's a lot of warehouses and f serving the, the factories and the local industries. Yep, I'm just watching the one behind me. Okay. <laughs> Good job we don't. Debbie, does Nottingham have a sheriff? Yes. Uh, but it's a ceremonial role. It's not a, a role with any political importance these days. So across the way there, you can see this is the, uh, you can see here where the, uh, the building of the station would have been, that white roof there. Um, that's where the platforms of that railway station would have been. And um, you see some of the, the sheds where the, uh, the trains are stored and maintained now um, close to the, the modern railway station. And the big chimney and plant at the back there, that's a waste disposal plant. So a lot of the land here that formerly belonged to the uh, railway companies, uh, it was acquired later by Nottingham City Council, the local authority. And um, so they have a lot of uh, facilities on this old railway site. And we're going to go and take a look at one of them, which is another beautiful Victorian building. You know, and um, I think it's one of the things I love uh, about the UK, about some of our cities, is the fact that the industrial buildings in the 19th century, you know, they didn't just build them to be practical. They really built them to look good as well. And we can still see that they, they really created... Yeah, they, you're right, Molly, they, they did have style. Uh, and, you know, and uh, I think uh, it's fantastic. Charlene, what time will the sun go down at this time of year? Uh, around seven in the evening. Uh, we uh, we advanced the clocks uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we've got a beautiful Victorian building here. Dates back to 1880 with this fantastic clock tower. And look at the, the weather vane on the top there with the cockerel. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, and this building was built by one of the railway companies as their main office here in Nottingham. So it's close to the railway lines, close to the stations and close to where all of the engine sheds and the maintenance departments were for the railways as well. Working clock, certainly on, the, well, certainly the one on this side appears to be telling the correct time, unless it's a coincidence and it's right twice a day. <laughs> no, they are right, okay. Now, the uh, part of the city in that direction for many years was the cattle market. So this was the huge livestock markets. So the livestock, you know, originally medieval times, of course, would have been brought here along pathways by drovers on foot. But over time, when the railways came, a lot of the livestock were brought here by wagon on trains. And so... Next to the railway lines is where the Victorian cattle market was. And a lot of buildings and industries associated with that. So this building ahead, which the city council now uses for some of its vehicle maintenance, this big brick building right in front of us, it has a great name because next to the cattle market, it is called to this day and what it originally was called the Hide, Fat and Skin Warehouse. The Hide, Fat and Skin Warehouse. Imagine telling somebody these days that you worked in the... Where do you work? Oh, I work in the Hide, Fat and Skin Warehouse. <laughs> so let's have another great look at this one. And we're going to look at a, another beautiful, stylish, industrial building with a somewhat unusual tenant. It is a horrible name, Joy, huh? but, uh, you know, I, I just, I never knew what that was called. I knew the building, but, uh, you know, when I was researching this tour, I, I just looked and I thought, it was called what? You know, it's kind of <laughs> so look at this huge warehouse building across the way. Hickings building. So this warehouse was designed for lace 
So all of the decorative lace that was being made in Nottingham and decorated and sold, they had to transport it. It was taken all around the world. And Hickings was a logistics company involved with the lace trade. And they built in 1873 this huge warehouse, which actually extends for quite a long way along the adjacent street as well. Okay, so Hickings, a massive company right next to the railway, right next to the canal, perfect for transportation. These days, the old Hickings warehouse is a apartments, bedroom departments. Uh, so very professionals and so. And Marlene, as you've spotted, unusual tenant in a 19th century industrial building. Hooters, absolutely Hooters. The only Hooters in England. There were others at one time, they, they came over here and they opened quite a lot, but one by one they all, they all closed down. Dorna, uh, Hooters is an, um, it's, an, it's a restaurant and sports bar, American, but uh, you have what are called Hooters girls. And uh, they are dressed in very tight white t-shirts and very short orange hot pants. Um, and uh, so it's kind of got a certain reputation. Um, and sticking with our sporting theme, there were for, for a couple of years um, when Hooters first opened in Nottingham, um, they had Hooters girls as the cheerleaders for our hockey team. Uh, to be honest, uh, for many people, considering the way we were playing at the time, was probably the highlight of the trip to the game, was the Hooters girls. Uh, I think the players liked it as well. I think that might have been might have been what was distracting them from their job out there on the ice, you know. I think some of our players spent a little bit too long in Hooters, checking out the Hooters girls. So we're walking here along the Nottingham Canal. And the Nottingham Canal dates back to 1796. That's when it was opened. Uh, and it follows the course, certainly here, of a river, the River Lean. Now, the River Lean flows down from the north of the county, and it originally flowed pretty much through the centre of Nottingham, very close to the castle, to where the textile industry was, and then joined the River Trent. But uh, the Lean was not so good for larger boats as time went on, and so the canal was built to link the city's industry and the coal mining to the north of Nottingham through here to the River Trent. So it was a very, very important um, link and it followed the River Lean and they essentially merged the last little bit of the River Lean into this canal. So um, they sort of come together, and the, it, but it's the, the Nottingham Canal of 1796. So it's not a long canal, it's only 15 miles long, but has 20 locks. Uh, so any journey along it with goods would take a little while. And these days, used for leisure purposes, you see leisure boats on it. And uh, we know that it's much cleaner than it would once have been when we had a lot of heavy industry and so on, and the coal mining, um, because... Uh, well, you, you see that we have water birds living there. There's a, a Canada goose down there. I've seen quite a few of those earlier as I was walking here. And um, we also saw, and we might see if they've not gone home yet, quite a few fishermen as well next to the canal. So uh, no, evidently there are, there are good fish to be had here in the Nottingham Canal these days. Uh, it links up with the River Trent quite close to here. So we're going to uh, go and look at our next sports stadium in a minute because there it is. So, you know, if you talk about sport in England, uh, the national game, the sport that is most popular and most part of the everyday culture of the country is football or soccer, as some of you may call it. But I'll call it football because I'm English. And here in Nottingham, we have two of the very oldest professional football teams and uh, we're going to see both of those stadiums because they're very close together and uh, so you know the football is a huge thing within the 
um, culture here. Um, you know, affiliation with the local teams um, is very important to people. And, you know, it will, it's very much part of the, the city's identity through its, through its sports uh, over the years. And, and that mainly is with football in this country. So the first of the stadiums we're, we're going to be able to take a look at is called Meadow Lane. And here we see, look, we, I told you we were going to the cattle market. Uh, it's still called Cattle Market Road. Uh, I'll cover up the splat. Uh, I mean, if somebody's going to graffiti something on a, a sign, I guess splat isn't bad. They could have written something worse than splat, I suppose. Cattle Market Road. <laughs> here we get a look back along the canal towards the city centre there. And the cattle market is, yeah, the main entrance to it is directly ahead of us here. These days on the cattle market site, no longer a cattle market here, of course, um, there are various small industrial units and there's also a really sort of iconic and popular um, Saturday market. Has everything from people just selling junk out of their cars to local organic food producers, uh, local craftspeople. So it's kind of a really, uh, really popular local market at the cattle market on a Saturday morning. And it's in the shadow of Meadow Lane. So this is Meadow Lane. This is the home of Notts County Football Club, known as the oldest professional club in, the, in England, and uh, one of the oldest in the world, Notts County, uh, founded in 1862, 20 years before we even had a football league in this country. They had a meeting at a hotel in town and decided to found this club. There are a couple of clubs that are older, but they are not professional clubs. So Notts County. Now these days, Notts County has had a difficult few years. Uh, they are in the fifth level of the football structure in England, what's known as the National League. So they've really fallen on hard times. And, uh, you know, that's uh, quite strange that they have a 20,000 seater, all, all seater stadium. And it's by far, you know, the biggest and the best stadium of the, the league that they're currently in. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, sort of the envy of, of every other club at the level they're currently playing at. Uh, they've ended up down that way through bad financial situations and uh, owners that were not really looking out for the best interests of the club, uh, including one who came along with promises of a golden future with money from the Bahraini royal family. Uh, it transpired that he was a con artist and this takeover of Notts County was just part of a global con. Uh, there's, the BBC have recently done a podcast called The Trillion Dollar Con Man about this guy, Russell King, of what Notts County were just one small part of. And they never really recovered from that and uh, eventually slipped down the, the, the leagues. Dorna, no, um, Nottingham Forest is, that is. So we'll be seeing their ground soon. So Notts County play in black and white stripes. That's their colours. Has been since uh, the 1890s. And they are known as the Magpies. And uh, I bet we won't see any now. But when we were walking along this morning on the way up into town, as we walked along here past the stadium, there were loads of actual genuine Magpies flying around. Um, but uh, yeah, guaranteed, we're not actually going to see them. So we see the side of the stand here, the Magpies. And some of you might be, if you know anything about football, more internationally, you might be familiar with the leading Italian club, Juventus. Juventus play in black and white stripes. Uh, and that is because Notts County lent Juventus some shirts when they were first established way back in the day. Uh, and that's why Juventus, one of Italy's and Europe's most successful teams, plays in black and white because of uh, that link. So let's get right on here. We can actually see through and see the main 
stand there with the club crest and name and even catch a little triangle of green and the pitch of Meadow Lane. So because they're, they're such a historic team, Notts County have really, you know, seen everything in terms of um, football and changes in culture and so on. Uh, a Notts County player, um, a chap by the name of Harwood Greenhaug, which is a great name, uh, he was a member of the England team in the first ever football international in the world in 1872. He played uh, uh, played for, selected for England then. And the road we're walking along, all the factories on, on the other side between here and the canal, um, this is uh, called Ironmonger Lane. Not Iron Munger. Oh yeah, right on cue. Couple, oh no, they've gone. That's the problem with magpies, you see. They have wings, they fly away. Now I can see them, but you probably won't see them on the, on the camera. Up on the roof there. So this street is called Iron Munger. Not Iron Munger. I-R-E-M-O-N-G-E-R. Iron Munger. And that is a kind of a version of the word Iron Munger. Someone who deals in iron. But it's not named after the factories and the trades around here. Uh, it is named after a man called Albert Iamunga, who uh, is Notts County's all-time leading appearance maker. Uh, he was a goalkeeper, and in the first two decades of the 20th century, he played 594 times for Notts County. That makes him their all-time appearances leader to this day. Hi, hi. And uh, he uh, has the road named after him. Yeah, so magpies, I think, was quite a common kind of nickname given to people who use those colours. Newcastle, you say Cathy, yeah, yep, same. So Meadow Lane Stadium that we saw um, rebuilt uh, in the early 90s. So the stadium has been here for 100 years, more than 130 years. But uh, that was the time when, after the uh, Hillsborough disaster, when uh, almost 100 Liverpool fans were killed in a crush uh, in the standing area um, in Sheffield at a, at a cup match. They uh, Then all the grounds, all the stadiums had to be all-seater. Uh, Meadow Lane was made into an all-seater, 20,000 stadium at that time. Kathy, yes, it's a parts shop for John Deere tractors, yes. Parts and repairs and that kind of thing. So, here's the canal again. We're crossing over it on a very old bridge. Uh, this bridge was built at the same time as the canal. So this stone bridge dates back to 1793. It doesn't carry traffic anymore, just Cyclists and pedestrians. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's what this bridge looks like. 1793. Yep, still standing. Still doing well. So that was exactly the time the canal was being constructed. It opened in 1796. Now, across the road, there is a huge kind of uh, residential district uh, of Nottingham that is called the Meadows. As the name suggests, uh, it was built on land that was drained. It was once areas of floodplain and meadow land between the River Trent and the River Lean as it flows through the centre of what is now the city. Um, and that was drained in the early 19th century as the city expanded to make room for more housing. Uh, the meadows uh, started to decline as some of the traditional industries declined uh, and a lot of the housing, the Victorian housing was replaced by modern social housing in the 50s and 60s, became a very run-down area 
a lot of crime, a lot of social deprivation. Uh, and although it's no longer such a, a crime hotspot, it still remains one of the poorest districts uh, of the city. Nobody in the city would call it the Meadows because uh, you have your own way of pronouncing things and that sound owes, you don't have that in Nottingham, this is called the Meadows, the Meadows. Just the same as the things that our local hero Robin Hood would have fired with his bow. They're not arrows, they're arrows. <laughs> So the district over there, the meadows. Yeah, the lampposts are beautiful, aren't they? It really shows kind of a bit of the grandeur that was, this was the main kind of route into the city centre. Borough, well, boroughs, yeah, borough. But borough, Robin, would be a more general British pronunciation of that word. That wouldn't just be in Nottingham, but the meadows, arrows, they definitely would be. So we've got a lovely building, another Victorian building across the way, built in a mock Tudor style. And uh, this was built in the uh, 1890s. And uh, it was built uh, by the Boots Company. I'm going to uh, make sure you get a... So Boots Company, of course, had their huge factory site very close to here as we saw a lot of the people working there would have lived around here uh, and this building was built they had a, a shop like a store company store if you like and they had a social club where there were entertainments and dancers and and all kinds of things laid on for boots workers uh, these days it's not doesn't belong to boots anymore but it is still a, a venue a pub and a function venue where people can hold wedding receptions and parties and so on. It's a beautiful mock Tudor Victorian building though. Famous for lace and Robin Hood. Absolutely, Cathy. Oh, I need to get back on the pavement here. Yeah. Always good. Now, one of the things that uh, you find throughout England or throughout Britain really is uh, pubs with uh, distinctive names. But uh, one of the interesting things is that pubs change their names. And often when this happens, you can kind of judge somebody's age by what they call a uh, particular. Valerie Boots, a pharmaceutical company. Still is. Marlene, yes, I was born in Nottingham. And uh, the pub over the way there, these days it's part of a craft brewery group called the Brew House and Kitchen. But again, it's a lovely Victorian pub building with great display of flowers. Uh, but it's changed names so many times over the years that you can kind of, you know how old somebody is by what they call that particular pub if they're local. So for me, I call it the aviary. Because uh, when I was uh, you know, a teenager in my 20s, uh, that's what it was called when I was... Yeah, not a beautiful old pub, huh? Other people will call it other things. Uh, you won't meet anybody these days who would know it by its original name from the 19th century. That was the Town Arms. Because we're about to walk onto Trent Bridge, the main bridge over the River Trent. And this was the entrance to the town. So Nottingham was not a walled city. You didn't have a gate. But what you did have was a toll house and a barrier. So... To come into the town, you had to pay your toll if you were going to trade in the markets or whatever, and they'd make sure, you know, whether they liked the look of you as you came over the bridge. And the Town Arms was the first pub that you reached if you came into Nottingham from the south over the river. Oh, that was loud. So we're walking up onto Trent Bridge. There's been a bridge very close to or on this site for over a thousand years and uh, we are going to see a little bit in a couple of minutes uh, a little bit of a remnant of a bridge from the 14th century the, st the first stone bridge but uh, the bridge as we have it now was opened in 1867 uh, it's a stone bridge designed by an architect called 
tar bottom uh, and it has these beautiful painted ironwork handles and uh, beautifully decorated here. Cafe the Cricket Ground is Trent Bridge. Yes, we're going to uh, see that very shortly. Tarbottom, great name, isn't it? Yeah. So what can we see as we look from the bridge here? Well, we can see the River Trent, third longest river in Britain, after the Severn and the Thames. And 185 miles long flows from the Staffordshire Moorlands all the way up through the central part, north eastwards through the middle of England and eventually drains into the Humber estuary on the, the Yorkshire coast. And what we have right next to the river is the larger of our two football stadiums. This is the city ground. This is the home of Nottingham Forest. Uh, it's a 30,000 seater stadium. Uh, Forest these days are in the second level of uh, the league here in England and uh, on very good form, potentially could get promoted to the top league, the Premier League, um, this season if they carry on in the current form. Very close to the, the river, as you can see. Um, the main stand, the newest stand in the stadium is the one closest to the river. You can see just where the tree is there. Um, this is called the Trent End. That's where traditionally the most loyal and vocal of the, the supporters would be in the ground. Now, Nottingham Forest and Notts County, you can see how close they are by how long it's taken us to walk. In a direct line, not going by road, in a direct line, less than 300 metres apart, the two football stadiums. So that's the closest two professional grounds in Britain. And since... Notts County dropped out of what we call the Football League, the top four levels. Nottingham Forest has taken their place as the oldest club uh, in the Football League because uh, they were formed just a few years later in 1865. Traditional, I guess for certainly in more recent times, Forest have been the more successful of the two clubs, particularly between the mid-70s and the late 80s, early 90s, under one of England's best known and most controversial uh, managers and charismatic figures, a man by the name of Brian Clough, after whom the main stand is now named at uh, the, the ground. Uh, under Brian Clough, uh, a provincial team, which Forest were in the second division, they were promoted, they won the English Championship in their first season in the top league and then won the European Cup, the equivalent of what we now call the Champions League, twice in succession. And so they were a massively successful club in the late 70s, early 80s, which coincidentally was the time when I was a kid just getting into football and uh, having your local club being league champion, twice champions of Europe. You kind of think, oh, it's going to be great being a Forest fan. Yeah, that's kind of it, though, though for all those decades since then. <laughs> There's not a massive local rivalry between the two teams, certainly not from the Forest side. I think there was some envy, definitely, on the part of County that Forest became so successful. Um, but from certainly for many, many decades, they've hardly ever been in the same divisions. So they've not been playing one another. There's not really been that fierce rivalry between the two. Um, Nottingham Forest's main rivals are Derby County, um, Leicester City a little bit, and Sheffield United. So other clubs in the surround, in neighbouring cities or close by cities that have been playing in the same kind of levels of football as they have. So the city ground is the name of this stadium. Uh, when Forrest moved in to it uh, in the 1890s, uh, they, it was called the town ground. Uh, but just after they moved in, Nottingham achieved the status of a city in 1897. 
And so they renamed it the City Ground, and that's what it's been ever since. And uh, the logo, the club badge of Nottingham Forest, as we get a little bit further along the bridge here, we will see on the side of the stadium is a tree. Forest play in red and white. And uh, their logo is a tree. And at the bottom of the tree are where you would have roots, like curly lines representing the River Trent. Um, and the trees part of our tour title. Well, Forest aren't known as the trees. They're known as the Reds. But uh, the Tricky Trees is kind of a sort of a, an affectionate nickname that is given um, to the club by its fans. And I think one of their fan podcasts and, and so on is called the Tricky Tree. So there you see the, the club logo on the side of the stadium there, the tree. And you can see that's the Forest Stadium with the floodlights. You look just across the Trent and you can see the floodlights of Meadow Lane, just a few little minutes away. Valerie, they don't have a lot of parking around these stadiums. People uh, travel on public transport mainly uh, into the centre of the city or by tram to um, the meadows or on bus. It's uh, People are encouraged to use. Uh, it's one of the big problems with a lot of the football grounds uh, in England because a lot of them were built uh, at a time when you know, everybody who watched the team lived quite local. You know, in Victorian times, everybody lived sort of in the, in the town itself. And so they were kind of walkable and the, the football grounds were in the cities. But over time, people started to move out into the suburbs and so on. And uh, so it, it did cause a big problem with... Uh, uh, with the uh, transportation. Well, a couple of interesting questions there. Built before cars were needed, absolutely, Donna. Morgan, what is my favourite part of my hometown or city? Ooh, that's a really hard question. <laughs> yeah, the, the hockey stadium, maybe. Um, it's a place that's associated with a lot of great memories. Um, I love the uh, the... I love some of the old pubs in Nottingham, the trip to Jerusalem, as Jan says. But uh, uh, I also like uh, the parks, uh, you know, and particularly I love Sherwood Forest as you get up into the northern part of the county. So uh, a few different places, really. Now, a couple of things to show you here. The building in front of us, very imposing building, stone building with a, with a green copper roof, uh, built between the 30s and the 50s. Well, they started it in the 30s and then they had a big gap during World War II, and then they recommenced again. This building is called County Hall, uh, and it is the seat of the local administration for Nottinghamshire County Council. So not the city, the surrounding county of Nottinghamshire. This is where they're based. It's called County Hall. And it's a very imposing building here by the Trent. Yeah, Duffet well, the daffodils, these, these are the, these are, the, the white ones rather than the yellow ones, so they're, but they are starting to come to the end a little bit. But I did promise you we'd see the older bridge. So this, two of the arches that remain from the original stone bridge over the Trent. The first ever bridge from over a thousand years ago would have been of wood. And then it was replaced by a stone bridge. And this one was built in 1367 uh, and it crossed the river. Uh, approximately ending up at the same point on the far bank uh, as the modern bridge does, but the modern bridge replaced it in 1867, and then this one was demolished. But they left these uh, couple of arches uh, as a little reminder. So, from the original Trent Bridge to a stadium called Trent Bridge, which is going to be where we are going to finish. So we've seen a hockey stadium and a nice talked about ice sports we've seen two football stadiums and we end with a cricket stadium one of the best known cricket grounds in the world Trent Bridge Trent Bridge is the home of Nottinghamshire County Cricket Club as Satyam quite rightly says 
Uh, in some now, cricket is very complicated. There are different forms of the game, but um, one of the forms, the shorter forms of the game, is called uh, one-day cricket. And the Nottingham team that plays here for that form is known as the Outlaws. And so uh, that is why I have Outlaws in the name. And it's also one of the large grounds used by the England cricket team for a lot of their for their home matches when they play against a visiting international team. They play matches in different cities and Trent Bridge, one of the ones where players from around the world have always loved to come and play. Now, the ground itself is it's quite hard to pick out. I'll take you and show you a little bit of it from the outside. But the most distinctive building is the pub, the Trent Bridge Inn. Great place to get a drink on match day, whether you're going to the football or the cricket. Um, but actually, the Trent Bridge Inn predates the cricket stadium by 200 years. The current, not the current building, but the Trent, there's been a Trent Bridge Inn on this site for well over 300 years. And just like the town arms on the other side of the bridge was the first pub you came to when you crossed the bridge, this was the last one before you got to the bridge. So if travellers arrived too late and the barrier had already gone down for the night, they would need somewhere to stay. And that's what this pub was all about. So the... Uh, Trent Bridge Inn um, was here first and the cricket ground originally began when someone organised a game of cricket on a field at the back of the pub back in the 1830s and uh, out of that a cricket club was formed and they built a ground here which is now a good sized cricket stadium. Cricket stadiums certainly in England don't have the same vast capacities as for example football grounds. Uh, it has about a capacity of about 18,000. It's a beautiful place to watch cricket and uh, if any of you think that you might like to know a little bit about cricket well uh, later in the summer I've enlisted a friend of mine who plays cricket and we're going to be doing a tour um, all about cricket and a little bit about the game and the equipment that's used and a little bit about how it's played um, so uh, so we're going to be doing that a little bit later in the summer. So these are some of the stands and stadiums. You can see the floodlights here of Trent Bridge. And this is where we're going to end. Somebody asked a question, Jan, about Masons and knowing the keystone. They kept it the secret. Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I think uh, definitely they kept some of the secrets. You know, that's why they had to have the, the Masons, because they were the, the guys who knew all of the the secrets to the building but I don't know exactly so we're going to be doing a cricket team tour later in the summer you went last August Kathy to watch the test match cool cricket cricket's really great you know on a hot on a warm summer's day sitting there watching the, the game all day nice cool drink with your friends fantastic so uh, we're going to end here if anybody's got any final questions feel free to ask them. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different tour. I will do it again and um, I will be uh, happy to uh, to share this with you again. MB, uh, oh, I don't know what I'm having because just like last Sunday I went out for lunch with my sister and we had a very delicious lunch and um, I'm going to just probably I'm not even a little bit hungry yet so we'll see. So now I'm heading straight in the car. I'm heading straight over to the castle because in one hour from now, one hour, we start our next tour, our Robin Hood tour. So I need to wait my, make my way back across the bridge to where the car is waiting and hop on over there. So maybe I'll see some of you there. But if not, thank you so much to all of you for joining my tour today. Thank you, Tish, for the link to that one. And uh, thank you for your tips. It is much appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you either a little later for the Robin Hood trip or maybe on Thursday or on a future tour. So take care, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye for now.